Okay, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, members and guests. Welcome to tonight's meeting of the West Shore Photography Club. It is March 21, 2022. Uh, we have an image review coming up, but before we get to that, let's do a few other items of business. Uh, I want to welcome Lori Dandy. She's uh, with us tonight uh, as a guest and announce that we have our 131st member. Uh, that's Susan Robertson. Steve's wife joined us uh, just today. So welcome to uh, Susan. Uh, next Monday night, we have a competition. Okay. There is no theme and Bryson Leidick will be uh, critiquing, not critiquing, he'll be judging the images. So the deadline as usual is midnight Thursday. And just a brief note about the difference between image reviews and competitions. Image review we're looking for maybe a second opinion, you just throw anything out and see what the, the critique or reviewer has to say about it. Competitions are a little different in that we're looking for your best work, okay? So go through your files, since there's no theme, you know, you can go through, look for anything, and, and, and but look for your best work and uh, present it there on Thursday night, upload by Thursday night, upload to uh, the website. If you have any questions about how to do that, let me know. Uh, okay, let's turn it over to Joe for some information about uh, trips. Okay, uh, we have a trip coming up this Saturday to Har in Harrisburg, and uh, Eve Smith and Mary Fox are going to be leading that at nine o'clock, and you'll get follow-on information in an email as to where to meet and where we're going to be going. And Mary, in a minute, I'm going to ask you to talk a little bit about that. And then... Uh, we have on, you might want to note this one, on April the 2nd, it's a Saturday, we're going down to Anderson Mill. Again, this will be our third trip. And if you've been there the last two times, I can guarantee you, you'll find new things on the third time. It is such a wonderful place to go to, three floors, nobody gets in anybody's way, and uh, you'll get full details on that uh, coming in, a, in an email. And I'm not going to go through the details of these, but we have a night photography trip that's going to be a follow on to a, uh, um, a night photography class that we're going to have in a couple of weeks. And that'll be in mid April with uh, Karen Cummings. Uh, we have a trip to Hershey Gardens with Elaine Shook, and uh, that'll be a lot of fun. And we are going to be uh, Mary Eileen Carson and uh, Karen Cummings are going to be taking us to a uh, mural walk in Harrisburg and a very safe walk. So those are some of the things that are coming up and we have others that we're gonna fill the schedule with, but that's just a little bit of a preview. And I will mention that if you're available on Wednesday evening of this week, uh, I'm doing a presentation over at the Mechanicsburg Art Center School and Galleries, and it is a round the world. I'm picking up uh, seven different countries um, like Tibet, Myanmar, uh, Sri Lanka, Faroe Islands, places like that. Um, and we're going to be uh, talking about the uh, those countries, and some of them are in conflict, and we're going to talk about that in conflict zones. So uh, that'll be at seven o'clock on Wednesday night, and it's free, and you're welcome to come. So I am done, Dennis. Very good. Thank you, Joe. Okay, Mike, uh, let's talk about the image review. If you want to uh, I have you set up. You can share your screen if you want to get ready for that. We'll get all set up. Uh, while you're doing that, uh, I forgot to ask Mary to tell us about the uh, Saturday trip. I'm sorry, Mary. Can you give us a little preview of that? Yeah, I was hoping you did forget, Joe. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. It, we're meeting at Kunkel Plaza, which is at the intersection of like Front and State Streets. And it's always fun because it's not just the streets and the alleys, there's houses, there's buildings. I think we're going to the train station and in front of City Hall. So there will be a lot to take pictures of while you're there and on the way, you'll be able to stop and take anything you want, really. So I hope you join us and, and it should be fun. Thanks, Joe. Great, thanks. Okay, thanks, Mary. You're welcome. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, at this point, let's uh, turn it over to Mike. We have 16 images tonight. Of course, the theme is fog. So, Mike, it's all yours. Okay, can you hear me? Yes. We can hear you. Okay. Um, normally, I try to relate an artist, painter, photographer to each person's individual work. But tonight, since there was a theme of fog, 
I have one name for everybody, and it's probably a name that many of you have heard already. It's J. M. W. Turner. He was a British painter in the late 17 and early 1800s. Um, he did a lot with watercolor and with oil. He was super controversial because he did what you were asked to do for tonight. And that is atmosphere, um, atmospheric perspective, not a lot of detail. Um, the other thing that he did that was truly raised a ruckus was he used a square canvas at times. And that caused a huge uproar because everybody knows that you use a rectangle canvas, rectangular canvas. So look at J.M.W. Turner, and you'll see that his paintings relate a lot to what we were, um, what we were doing tonight. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. Um, the first one is Three Veils. And the first I, thing that I we cannot see that image, Mike. Oh, you cannot. All right, hold on. Oh, my screen sharing is paused. It says. Uh oh. Hold on. Still no good. Uh, well, move your mouse. No, we can't. it's not good yet. All right, I'm gonna stop the share and do it again. I don't know how to unpause it. All right. Okay. How are we now? <laughs> Good. I My see guy. three veils. All right. Thank you. I couldn't hear. I couldn't hear anybody. I had myself muted. Sorry. All right. <laughs> and you can hear me now. Okay. Well, yes. You're good to go. All right. Um, the three veils. First of all, I um, I like the use of layers. By layers, you have a dark, darker layer over a lighter layer. Uh, both are in the shape of triangles, which triangulation is is a good way to make a strong composition. The uh, green and even the sort of bluish haze in the back, the fog creates a feeling of peace. Uh, you use the foreground, which is the water, a middle ground, which is the triangle on the left, and a, a um, background, which is the triangle on the right. So good work there. It's a nice capture. I'm guessing you were on a boat and moving and you had to get the shot. One thing I might suggest is um, the front section, the um, right in here, if you can see my cursor, that is really hard contrasty to the one in the back. So maybe you wanna back off on your sharpening a little bit on the front or desaturate a little bit in here. It looks a little bit like what's called the Orton effect, which is kind of a glow and a dreamy look. So I'd back off on that just a little bit because it actually looks like two separate places in, in a way. So try that and see what you think. Uh, technically, the focus is sharp. As I said, maybe you wanna back off the sharpness here a little bit so it's not so contrasty to the other one. And I know, or I'm guessing what you were after was advancing the one on the left and receding the one on the right, but try and, and balance a little bit so that they're a little more related anyway and see what you think of that idea. Uh, good composition. The base layer on the bottom, the water, is a, a perfect size, a perfect base for the other two to sit on. Uh, as far as distractions go, I didn't find any. And people must be thinking, oh my gosh, he's going to do it tonight. I got to get rid of all the dots. Um, there's just one, which I would remove. Uh, right in here and a, two, sorry, a little one right there, but that's nothing, nothing big. You know how I am about those. The problem with dots is when you enlarge something to make a print, they get big along with it. So keep an eye out for those. On the whole, 
the distractions were minimal. Even when I mention them, it's way better than, than even what I'm used to with my own stuff. The lighting is what's called um, high key back here, but not here. So maybe that has to do with, with why they look so different to me. Uh, the color, the green is a cool, relaxing color. Green has to do with peace, nature, spring. So um, good work there. I like the, the use of the repeated shapes and you really wouldn't notice this repeats this. And that's, not, that's nice. That's a good, uh, good composition, compositional tool. So as far as processing go, um, goes, I try to desaturate the green a little bit up here and back off maybe on your sharpness just a touch or even desaturate just a touch here and see what you think of those ideas. Give it a shot. I say this every time I do a review. If I say something that you try and it looks ridiculous, blame Dennis, he's the president. Okay, who's the photographer here? Oh, that's mine, Mike, uh, Norbert. Uh, yeah, Mike, you, you almost said everything that, that I, you know, what, what can I say? <laughs> it was, uh, you're right, it was taken on, on a ship, we're, we're going down in a fjord in Norway, and uh, it was early morning, and it was really foggy, and uh, yeah, I, I, I had, uh, I was mixed about, you know, what you're saying about darkening this, uh, this darker area over here, I didn't know that should be darker or lighter you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. and uh so I, I was mixed about that but I, I like some of your suggestions i'm going to try something here that you that you mentioned here well norbert instead of darkening or lightening try a little bit of a desaturation okay yeah okay and then it won't be really quite such a harsh difference or such a yeah. strong difference yeah. i should say yeah let's see what I you think it. all right thanks mike i appreciate okay. it Okay, sunrise at Little Buffalo. Um, oh, by the way, I wanted to take a quick moment and go over the sheet that um, the judges and reviewers get so that you have an idea of, of what I'm using. Uh, real quickly, it's the first three are what you did well, what you could have done better when you took the picture, what you could do now in post-processing. And then the other section has to do with the wow factor, technical issues, composition, distractions, lighting, use of color, creativity, and post-processing. So those are things that, that we are asked to try to touch on or at least notice um, when, we're, when we're going through your images. So we're not just making this stuff up. Well, we are making it up, but at least we have a, a guideline to go by. So let's look at sunrise at Little Buffalo. Uh, the composition is really, really quite good, I think. The, the curve of the yellow line is beautiful. The curve of the road is beautiful. Um, you have, of course, that's a leading line. You have a repetition of form with the, um, the guide rails, the guidelines there along each side of the road. The repeated posts takes a person right back into the back of the image. And when you have a viewer travel through your image, that's a good thing. That's a very good thing. It's a, it's a good capture. Now, as far as the, the, um, the image itself goes, the, the setup is beautiful. But what I would try to do is back off of your sharpening a little bit or your Orton effect or, or your glow maybe. Because if you look carefully, around the photographer, you can see that he stands out quite a bit, almost three-dimensionally. There's what's called reticulation. Well, with film, it was called reticulation. It looks like maybe a little Vaseline smeared there or something. That's kind of the effect that it is. So take a good close look and see if you can back off of your sharpening a little bit there and see if you can get rid of that because it's gonna show on a print. And the thing of it is, it's so beautiful of a set, of a composition. You may want to just slightly back off the green a little bit. It's, it's heading towards a little bit unnatural. 
So, so maybe desaturate the green just a little bit. Now, I am impressed with your sun coming through the haze because generally when a digital camera deals with right into the sun, when you try to print, or at least when I try to print, I get this aqua blue halo around the sun because the sensor has an awful time with it. Your sun looks absolutely beautiful, just beautiful. Your exposure is great. Um, your background is soft and lovely. It maybe back off, as I said, the saturation a little bit and see what you think of that. Your composition is excellent. Um, the perspective that you use, you use two perspectives, actually. You use the linear perspective. You can see that the road travels back to a vanishing point. The parallel sides of the road get closer and closer and closer in your view until they disappear. And you also used, as many of these did, what's called atmospheric perspective, meaning the foreground is sharp, the background is soft, and that gives some real depth. So you can see that this has actual real depth. Now, a couple of things I might recommend as far as distractions go, a couple little white spots here, but distraction wise, everybody's really, at least I think has improved greatly. Try and think of your images as a print and what would these do? They are almost the same value as this. And by value, uh, we can say brightness, I guess. So as a result, this will tie into this. So get rid of these two and you're good to go. The lighting is soft and wonderful. A real nice use of a cool color and warm color. The background is warm. The foreground is cool. Real nice there. Um, a good idea to put the person in. As I said, you might have a little work to do there to make it look a little more natural. He's really popping out. And um, as far as post-processing, I would desaturate the green a little bit, clean up the spots. Everything else looks great. Who did the shot? That's mine, Mike, <clears throat> Dave Stauffer. Uh, that's Norbert shooting there. It uh, was taken in 2008. And it is, I searched and searched and like came up with two pictures with fog <laughs> and this was one of them. <laughs> Understood. <laughs> yeah. Well, maybe the problem with the reticulation is that it is Norbert. <laughs> I don't know about that. All right. Thanks. Yeah, it's yeah. beautiful. Thanks, Mike. Mike. Oh, you're welcome. Thanks. Fog on Front Street. Um, one, one, really great thing that you did here is your exposure on the street lamps. There's not any kind of big burnout in the middle or anything, and that's not necessarily easy to do. So good job on that, very good job on that. Again, the linear perspective, you can see the lamps getting smaller and smaller as they head back to a vanishing point. The path does the same and the trees do the same. And again, as I mentioned before, the atmospheric perspective, also is creating depth. You can see the dark, sharp, more detailed in the front, fading into less detailed in the back, and that adds some real depth to your shot. I like the people in the back. I wasn't sure at first, but it gives an anchor, something for your eye to go to, and that takes you right back the path, and that, that's, that's good. Compositionally, that's very good. Um, as far as the uh, post-processing goes, one thing I might suggest to you is, again, when it's it's hard to not over sharpen a fog shot because you want it to be crisp, but a fog shot doesn't have to be. So you're fighting some halos along these edges here, along the sharp edges, and a halo generally happens when you're over sharpening. So back off on your sharpening and see if they disappear. I use a, a software called On One, and it has a tool called a chisel tool because these halos are so prevalent. And what that does is you run it along the edge and it takes a couple pixels off so that the halo disappears. But try a little, um, try a little backing off on your sharpening, see what you think of that. Uh, technically, the halos uh, may be over sharpened a little. 
I like your composition. The repeated shapes, um, the, the leading lines, the linear perspective. I'm, I want to mention also that if you have more room on the bottom, try and see if you can get to the bottom of the post so it's not just kind of floating there like the tree is also. See if you have room to go all the way to the bottom with your crop. And that'll make it seem more grounded and more solid with your composition. Uh, let's see, distractions. I, I think really all that I would do here is, I debated on removing this or not. So I suggest you try it and see what you think without it, see what you think with it. You could use it as a beginning point for this run back here through these little bushes and weeds, or you could remove it and you have this be your starting point to work your way back. So try it either way, see what you think. The lighting is good. Your balance between natural light and artificial light is real good. Um, the bluish light and the warmish light, that's been a, a kind of a theme through these fog shots and, and it looks good. It works well together. The blue is calm and cooling. The orangish yellow is warm and inviting. So a uh, good combination there. As far as creativity, I, I give gold stars to everybody who went out on a cold, miserable, foggy day to take photographs because that's the opposite of what most people think. Good use of vertical lines here. Your vertical lines, which show strength and um, solidity, real nice use of verticals here. As far as post-processing, um, the only thing that I would say is try backing off your sharpening a little bit and see what you think. Okay, who did this? Mike, that's mine. Um, I was in, on Front Street, of course. This is where we'll be meeting, by the way, on Saturday, right near here. <laughs> and it was a foggy day and we were just taking, Diane Parisi and I were taking shots that day. And those people in the, in the photo, they just happened to be caught. That was just a lucky accident there, Mike. I didn't even know they were in it when I took the picture. <laughs> but um, I'm going to try backing off the sharpening. You know, I, I always do that too much, I think. And thanks for the um, all the input. I appreciate it. Oh, you're welcome, Mary. Okay. Um, I'm going to talk a moment about what's called values. Um, there's... The, the photographer everybody has heard of, Ansel Adams, had a system called the zone system. And it went from total black to total white in 10 steps. And some people called those 10 steps zones. Some people said tones. Some people said values. When you do a watercolor painting, you do a value study first, meaning you do it sort of in black and white. And the values are really people say the tones, but it's different. Like this is one value. This is a different value. This is a different value. This value can be very close to this one. So that's what I mean when I say a value. It's almost a darkness, but it, it's different. But this image has tremendous use of values. The range in values runs all the way from here to here, and many, many values in between. And that's what makes a black and white image have depth, is, is using, in my opinion, a lot of value. And you'll notice that these values, as with all these fogs, have a dark in the front and a light in the back, which gives depth. This little sailboat here gives you depth, and it also gives you an idea of where the horizon might be. These verticals here look beautiful against the horizontals. The reflections, same thing. Uh, one thing that I think is really great is that you have detail everywhere. You have detail everywhere. Um, as far as the wow factor, it's tremendous. Excellent exposure, wonderful focus. The composition is very well balanced thanks to this. Because what happens is you're traveling down, 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 and you don't stop. You continue, which as I said before, when somebody travels through your image, that's a great thing. Beautiful use of layers here. 
Very, very nice. Uh, as far as distractions go, I have, do have one suggestion for you, and that is this word Honda. I would either try to lower the values of those letters so they're not so prevalent or even get rid of them all, which may, may make your um, raft kind of disappear. So, so that's up to you. But I, I definitely think that this, I don't want to say it's out of place, but it's an eye catcher because of the, the light value that it has. Lightness seems to, to advance and stick out. Uh, the lighting is soft and still and peaceful and beautiful. Like these fog shots are like having a gigantic soft box over the sun. It's just positively great. I uh, already mentioned the values, the creativity as far as being creative goes, it's really great when you can turn something ordinary into something extraordinary. And this is a bunch of docks that people don't even pay attention to. They walk on them, they jump off and swim, they did, but you've made it into something beautiful. Great processing. I love this triangle of light here, which is a beautiful lead to there. So good job. Who did this one? Hi, Mike, it's Elaine Shook. Um, well, it's thanks, awesome. Thanks so much for your feedback. I, I'm sitting here chuckling because um, I think your eyes must be much better than mine. I still can't <laughs> see that Honda on there. Um, right but here. I'll zoom in and try to blur that out or something. <laughs> but, yeah, um, my reading glasses aren't all that great either. But I have well, to tell you that the, the biggest challenge in this photo that I had was um, making that sailboat perceptible because it really <laughs> yeah. was barely perceptible. Um, the, the fog was incredibly dense and I had to work very hard to bring out a little bit of darkness and shape in that so that I had, um, a, I don't even know if you can call it a focal point, but that's where the lines were leading to. Mm -hmm. um, and it's still not where I want it to be, but I don't think I can bring it out anymore. I just think the data is not there because of the fog. Um, but the, the shot was taken several years ago at a lake that we frequent, and uh, it's frequently like this in the morning. So I often get up and shoot as much fog as I possibly can. But thanks Good. again for your feedback. You're welcome. And I'm, I'm glad you worked with that boat because it's important in your composition, as you know. Okay, softly revealed. It's always a nice thing when you crop to enhance the image. So the, I like the crop here. I won't suggest dropping the top because there's interest up there, which is really, really nice and kind of rare in these fog shots because it's hard to get interest up there. Um, Elaine was just saying how hard it was to make that boat appear. So a uh, great crop. Interest in the sky is excellent, and it allows the viewer, your composition allows us to complete these shapes. It's called an implied line or implied forms that you know that these go down into the ground or into the snow, and your eye can complete that for you. So that, that's a beautiful use right there of the fog on the ground. It's a great example of a high key photograph and keeping the grain, it's a little bit grainy. It, it wouldn't be the same all smoothed out and, and uh, noiseless. So I like the grain, I like the, um, the use of it there. So, so good work there. The horizontal composition is really nice because it is impacted even more by the verticals. And you've heard me say before that vertical lines really evoke power and strength, which trees also evoke. Very nice here. Very nice. You can, your eye finishes the silo back here. And even here, nice balance between the barn and the trees. Good job on the composition for sure. Um, one thing that I would remove is right here. 
a small black dot. When you have a high key composition like that, anything totally black is gonna jump right off the paper. And I do have to tell you, um, I've been taking a, a watercolor class online and part of it, you smack your brush against your, your fingers to throw paint and speckles on, on the paper. And before I started to go through your pictures, I thought, oh my gosh, there's spots everywhere. Well, they were spots on my monitor from the watercolor. So I had to be very careful about which spots I picked out for you to remove. Uh, let's see, the lighting is flat, but it is beautiful. And it doesn't matter that it's flat and there's not much depth because everything is right here in front. All the interest is in the front. So the flat lighting is actually to your advantage this time. Um, high key values. Remember we talked about value. This has all values toward the white side of things, which is called high key. Very creative treatment of a common scene. Your crop is really, really good. I like how the values fade into the mist, almost like the opposite of what you'd expect. Um, delete that little spot there and you have a thing of beauty. Okay, who did this? Uh, that's, that's me, Mike Dennis. Yeah, thank you. Uh, the one thing I wasn't sure about was the, the lack of depth. There's nothing that leads you into the image. It's very flat, uh, you know, unlike some of the other images that we've seen so far tonight. But uh, that was down by the Williams Grove Speedway a couple of years ago. It had snowed and then warmed up and it got extremely foggy for a period of time. So thank you. You're welcome. This saves you a little bit as far as your concerns about depth and here, but I I don't see it. I don't really see it as a problem because it's almost like a like a Japanese painting that's all flat. You know what I mean on the same plane. Okay. Okay. Fishing in the fog, Greenland. Um, the things that were impressive about here is you had highlights everywhere and you did not burn them. There's nothing that's completely white because if you burn them out and when you print, there's not white ink in your printing set. So it'll just be blank there. It'll be the paper showing where there's no ink. So nothing's really blown out. And that possibility was really, really strong there. So good job with that. I like the depth. Uh, you have repeated shapes heading back from um, the center back to the top left. Very nice there and a lot of repetition in the birds. I like the color, which is again, blue is a peaceful natural color. Very nice there. Um, one suggestion, let's see. Oh, I know it says, what could you have done better at the time of capture? If you, it, at the time of capture, I try to always keep my rule of thirds grid on. So if you can keep, your boat is not dead center, but if you could have it back just a little bit, I think that would help you and give it room to move into. But other than that, your processing's great. Um, the blue fades back into lavender, which is beautiful. So good job there. Uh, technically, your use of depth of field is really good. Your soft background, again, gives depth, the sharpness in the front. Uh, the composition is actually, to me, kind of circular. So I run from here down to here to this bottom corner and back up again. And that also might be why the fishing boat appears to be more in the center, because you're actually in the center of a circular composition. Um, I like the scale of the tiny boat compared with the tops of the icebergs with the ice flow. So that's really good. Um, it's funny, I, I was going to suggest removing a dot. And when I looked, I saw the dot is actually a bird. I would still remove it so that it doesn't inf interfere with your circular composition. The lighting is a cold blue light which adds to your cold feeling, although it, it heads toward warm as it goes away, which, which it should because it's leaning more and more toward the sun. Uh, creative, 
creatively. You made a great use of a normal activity, but it's in unusual surroundings. So that's that's a creative thing to spot and see. And it's pretty awesome with all the gulls hanging around because I guess they're cleaning fish and you know how that works. Um, clean up the spot. There's a, maybe I would take that one out too. And it looks like just a really slight glow, which is kind of kind of beautiful. So really my suggestions are removing rather than adding. Okay, who did this one? Uh, this is Joe, Joe Farrell. Um, I didn't actually, I add a, uh, an Orton effect glow to a lot of my images. I didn't do that on this one. Oh. And, I, and I didn't because um, I didn't want to have to go in and do layers and take out the boat because I wanted the boat to be wanted the boat to be sharp. That was the way the scene was uh, was presented to me, and I debated about doing a crop on the left to have the boat more to the left side of it, but then that that interfered with my circular pattern that you talked right. about. So that's why I didn't do that. Right. So, well, thank you for your your uh, your comments on. It. I really appreciate that. And I'm going to have to go buy that anti-dot tool that you think you are selling, okay? <laughs> In this case, it's anti-bird. <laughs> anti-bird, okay. Thank you, Mike, very much. Uh, you're welcome. Morning burn in the Smokies. Your orange lighting is really beautiful. I like the natural frame that you used. Um, you have a great use of layers here. Here you have like a, a triangular section, another one, working your way back. All the layers, as, as you know, that gives a lot of depth. One thing I might suggest is I would get rid of this and take this out. This is so close to the corner that it's going to stop your eye from traveling around the frame. So just darken it or clone it out or whatever you want to do. Uh, let's see. One other suggestion that I have for this one is, and this will get you back to the smoky so you can do this shot over again, is I would use a bit of a smaller aperture so that these would be sharp as well. It's, it's always kind of a struggle whether a soft foreground blocks you from going into the image or whether it leads from soft to sharp back into the image. So that's up to you, whatever you think. Uh, let's see, the foreground sharpness, the framing is great, the layers are great. Um, distractions, I already went over, the lower left. The beautiful orange lighting, which there's a lot of shadows, but there's detail in the shadows. There's detail in the darkness here, and that's really nice. That's really, really nice. Even down here, there's a shadow, but you still have details. So really good job there. Uh, let's see. As far as post-processing, I already mentioned what I would do. I, sharpening pro won't help this. So really, go with it. OK, who did the image? That was me, Steve Robertson. Um, I, we, yeah, we were, we had a cabin down in the, uh, in the Smokies for a week and every morning we'd wake up to this and basically the, the, as the morning went, the, uh, the clouds, the uh, fog would dissipate and you just every, about every 15 minutes, you'd have a different, a different, uh, picture to take. It was beautiful. <laughs> yeah, I agree for sure. All right. Thanks. Thank you. Okay. Now I'm not sure who traveled with you to the Smokies, but. Um, Cade's Cove, which is sort of like the big spot with it is famous in the, in the um, Smokies, is here. And my suggestion there is you used light and color beautifully. You may know that orange and blue are complementary colors, and that's why they look so good together. Um, you have a foreground, a middle ground, and a background. You have one suggestion I might have here would be, uh -oh, if you can recrop, if you have more room, I would make probably the foreground a little thinner, the background a little bigger. They compete because they're the same size, which carries the same weight in the shot. So 
rather than look like stripes, they would look like layers. So I would either, I, and there's a way more interest for me in the top layer. So maybe cut off some of the bottom and see if that helps you um, create three different layers of three different sizes. And hopefully that'll be a little more interest, but you try it and see what you think. Uh, real good recognition that, that the shot is there for sure. The foreground, middle, bound and, middle ground and background, you use that idea beautifully. Your exposure is good. Again, there's detail in the front and there's detail in the back. So good work there. Excellent use of layers. Um, as I said, the bottom layer and the top layer compete with each other a little bit for um, dominance one over the other. But your use of verticals and horizontals is good. Your horizontal lines provide peace and calm and your verticals provide strength. So good work there. Um, I've, I think, and I know these actually are really there but I think I would get rid of these little um, milkweeds maybe because these have about the same value as these, as this right here. So I think that I would take those out. And again, every suggestion I have, you try it, you see what you think. If you don't like it, you don't do it. The lighting, each section seems to have its own lighting. You have a dark value in the, in the front, you have a lighter value and then a medium value. So each section seems to be lit individually. And that, that's, that's creative. That's pretty cool. Uh, you used warm and cool colors beautifully together. And as a matter of fact, um, whether by coincidence or by your idea, it's kind of reddish on the bottom and bluish in the middle and yellowish on the top, which are the three primary colors of pigment. So your use of color there was really quite good. Uh, let's see, your post processing is fine. And I think that's all I have for that one. Who did that? I did, my, Marlene McNamara. Um, I have a lot more that I could put on the top, but it just, just the way some of the branches were looked a little funky. So I cropped it down that far. Okay. Um, if you, if you try my idea and you think, see these funky branches, see if you can clone those out of there. Okay. That's a good idea. And see what you think of that. And if you think my idea is stupid, don't tell me. Okay. No, I think it's a good idea. And if work <laughs> comes worse, I'll take it off the bottom. <laughs> okay. Thank yeah, you. See, see what you think. You're welcome. Yeah. Mike, can I ask you a question? Yeah, absolutely. On that one. Do you get the, the feeling that, that the top layer, because it's a warmish color compared to the middle layer, that the top is actually closer than the middle layer? Yeah. As, I, it's as, like a, an illusion to me that you know, makes me, it's kind of interesting. Yeah. The, 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 what happens is you have a bluish light against an orangish light. And as you know, they're complementary. So that's going to make one or the other jump. And I think that's what's happening. And yeah, you're right, actually, because brighter things tend to advance and darker tend to recede. Thanks. Morning mist over Anata Lake in the Berkshires. Um, first of all, I'm known to not just Mark Albano, but probably to many of you, as a man of millions of presets and textures. So I have to give you credit. You narrowed it down to a texture that works in this case. And it looks good, I think. You are revealing detail, but it's still dreamy looking. And, and I like that. It's, it's a, a perfect shot to give it a try. It's also beautiful how you start so sharp here, and as things, you see it drops back, you can tell that it, it's back further because it's darker, this is lighter. And you can see the atmospheric perspective taking effect as it goes further and further and further away from you. And that is really, really nice, really nice. Um, one, th one thing that I might suggest is to me, the sky is the main interest. 
And people say, you know, try not to run your horizon line across the middle. Well, there's actually a reason for that, a scientific reason. And that is your eye, my eye as a viewer is going to struggle between two sections of equal weight. Is it really a photograph of the skyline and the um, tree line and the water? Or is it the tree line and the sky? And you can probably take some of this off and still maintain your beautiful reflections there. So give that a try and see what you think, because I think the sky has way more impact than the water. So, um, so I would suggest you crop something off the bottom there and that'll drop your horizon a little bit and that'll give you more of a two thirds, one third feel or that the sky is predominant. Um, as far as a wow factor, it's really, it's beautiful. It really is beautiful. The exposure is good. The dark and light and all shades in between, just because it's not black and white, it, well, it is, it's just toned. So you still are working only with values to create depth. And you can see these lighter values here look closer than these darker values here. And that's what Dennis was just talking about. The values seem to make some things advance. So, so really nice there, really nice. Um, I mentioned the composition. Above the dot. And I know this is there, and I know it might sound ridiculous, but I'm gonna I'm gonna suggest you take this out. And the reason is so it doesn't fight with this. That's the only reason. If it wasn't closer, these you can see they look like they're right in place. But to, for me, these are too close together, and I like this because that ad also adds to your horizontal lines, which are peaceful and calm. Uh, the lighting is dramatic. The sky looks great. The sepia tone or the slightly lavender tone, whatever it is you used, gives it an old school feeling, an old, an antique feeling. Uh, real nice there. Uh, good choices on the processing. The sky is dramatic. Try cropping away some of the bottom and see what you think. Okay, who's, who's the artist? Hey Mike, uh, Dave Marchetto here. I, I can tell you've never been to Anota Lake in the Berkshires. Oh. You should get there. <laughs> you, should get, <laughs> you should get there sometime. <laughs> and then I'll learn how to say it. Is that what you mean? <laughs> Mike, this is, this is where I grew up as a boy. And to me, it's a very personal image. And I tried to suggest sort of a retro feel to it. You um, did. What, thank you. When I was growing up, um, our local paper, uh, the Berkshire Eagle, how patriotic <laughs> can that be, used to have a very well-known photo photographer and he would publish in the Eagle Eye a special section on Saturday. So this is the kind of image that, uh, you know, that, that could, could have been there. I really appreciate all those comments. And I have one one um, burning question for you, and that's the value of the house to the left of the center, which um, you keep going. There it is. That was fairly white. What, what do you think about uh, white versus medium versus not there at all? I like it as is because, you're, again, you're not competing with this. This is, this is advanced. These are all advanced because of the lighter value. This is back because of the darker value. So to lighten this would kind of be like putting a spotlight on it or making it come to you. And having it there adds to the human, the human aspect of it like the doc does. So I'd let it just as is my personal feeling. Well, I, uh, I, I really appreciate that. And as usual, Mike, uh, your, your comments. Thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome. Say the name of the lake again. Anota. Anota. Okay. I, yeah, I, it's, I, uh, it's, one of the, it's one of the larger lakes in western Massachusetts. Uh, the Berkshires are the uh, part of the Appalachians there. Uh, they don't, uh, they're not ready for primetime mountains. So you're, <laughs> looking at, you're looking at a Berkshire hill there. 
Okay. And uh, so it's, it's about a mile, uh, a mile square or so. Well, understand my mispronunciation because I'm the guy that stopped in Florida to ask where Wikivoss Springs was. <laughs> and the guy told me, I have no idea, but I know where Wakiva Spring is. So, yeah, I've done it before. I'm, I'm with you, Dave. Orchard Slumber. Uh, real good use of the graphics here, the lines, the shapes, your exposure is good. Uh, the warm tones of the ground are nice. Um, one thing I might suggest to you is changing the horizon line. And you can do that with a crop, take an inch or two off, because really your interest in your photograph is here, is, is in the bottom half, in my opinion. So taking some of this off the top will give more weight to the bottom. And that's where the viewer is gonna wanna look. Um, what you have there is a beautiful set of lines and shapes verticals, horizontals, and curves. So take advantage of it. Don't let the sky compete with it. Drop maybe an inch or two down and see if that makes a difference cropping off the top of the sky because you have, um, you have a good looking shot there. Uh, let's see. Technically, um, you could be sharper. And I don't know if it's because of my screen. I, I hesitate to talk about sharpness when you look at something on a computer screen because sometimes you know, people say, well, it's really sharp on mine. So I'd be a little careful with that. Although um, this sharpness, as opposed to this softness tells me, go back there again and use a little bit smaller aperture so that you can get this in sharp as well. Uh, let's see, your exposure is great, really nice. The, um, the composition, as I said, it's a mix of curves, straight lines, great use of line. And I like the building, which gives you something to go to, something to head for. And the fact that it's not like pure blinding white is really, really nice because that lets the fog be the lightest part of the shot rather than the roof there. Uh, it looks like midday lighting which can be a little bit flat, but you're still, in this case, what you're revealing are the graphics of it. Now, if you go back in late evening with the shadows, you might have lines all over the place and ruin your composition. So I think this works. Uh, it's very creative of you to pick out lines and shapes rather than just say, I'm gonna photograph the orchard. The processing, try a bit more contrast maybe, and drop down on top of the sky with your crop. Okay, who did this? Hi, Mike, it's Lori, how are you? Hey, I'm good, how are you? Good, good. So, um, yeah, thanks for your review. I, As far as the sky goes, I did try to do that, but then I was still trying to maintain um, the scale and so what would happen is what you were saying about the posts i was a, i tried to crop in more but then i didn't want to either make my crop too tight to the edges of the post or even oh, have right. to crop the post out so that was the problem i ran into that that scene has a lot of things to consider and <laughs> and to you know and i i have some where the barn is more centered but with this particular one i had a hard time getting rid of the sky and and not cropping out the posts. So um, well, just make it more of a panoramic shot and drop only the top of the sky. Okay, I mean, I don't usually do panoramic, so that's probably, you know, I'm stuck in my little rut of having a certain, <laughs> you know, scale. So, um, but yeah, I could definitely consider that. Um, as far as sharpness goes, um, I am having an issue with my lens, which I didn't realize until I was out shooting, because I kept trying to figure out why I would adjust the aperture and it was saying it was getting underexposed. So right now my lens is not adjusting the aperture. So I always have an open aperture. I actually just posted on our uh, West Shore photography site about someone like looking at my camera. So basically my aperture is always fully open. So I don't really have that option right now. <laughs> Understood. <laughs> yeah. Then ignore what I said. Yeah, and then for the post on the left-hand side of the image, right. um, 
I did, I felt like they were a little bit darker and I just felt like I, maybe it was almost too harsh. Um, so I did kind of dodge them a little bit to detract from the blackness of it. So, I mean, so maybe that was just an aesthetic choice that, yeah. um, you know, would be a personal preference type thing. So. Yeah, yeah. And it, it certainly is up to you for sure. So, but thank you though. I appreciate oh, your input and I'll play a little bit more. Thanks. So Lori, you're wondering where to, to take your lens to get it repaired? Yes. Uh, how about uh, uh, Perfect Image in Lancaster? Could recommend that. Yeah, I think that was where some, is this Dennis? Yes. Okay, yeah. Um, I think that is where you had mentioned. So I was considering that. And I'm actually not sure, you know, I don't know if it's my lens or if it's the communication from my lens to the camera that doesn't allow for it to stop down. So I'm okay. not really sure have what's causing the problem. Lens? What? Have you tried a different lens? Well, I am going to do that. I just didn't do that yet, but I am going to try. I see, keep, see, seem to keep running into that problem. And I think it's because I'm not very gentle with my equipment because um, <laughs> I've had it, honestly, because I've had it happen before. So I'm, and then I run, run into the problem where I'm not sure if it's the body or if it's the actual lens. So, okay. Yeah. And, and what type of equipment is it? The Canon? Uh, it's Nikon. Is that Nikon. what you're asking? Yeah, yeah. That's what I was wondering. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So. Anyone else have any suggestions? Okay. <laughs> yep. I have, seen that, I have yep. seen that situation on Nikon cameras. Matter of fact, it happened just recently with a member whose name I forget now, where that wasn't communicating correctly. And uh, the solution that I have uh, in the past have encountered uh, would be to take the lens off and clean the contacts on the camera with a little bit of um, uh, Q-tip with some alcohol on it. Okay. Uh, not, not scotch, but some other kind of alcohol. <laughs> And, and clean that off on the lens and on the uh, camera and then put it back together. And then if it doesn't work, take it and, and then jiggle it a little bit. Uh, even while you have the camera on, just turn it one way or the other to see if it starts to communicate. And that'll tell you if you have a bad connection in there. And that's a trick that I, it's worked for me numerous times. Oh, well, I would love it if that was a, it was as simple as that. So that would be great. I'll um, definitely try that. And okay, thank you. That, was, that was the bonus content for tonight. Okay, Mike, back to you. <laughs> All right, yay. Uh, I'm sorry, I fell asleep. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you are getting a little older, you know. Okay, that yeah, I'll say. <laughs> okay, on Golden Pond, um, I, I really like your use of layers. And it's, it's kind of emotional. It's the, the birds are overlaid but they're not solid. So you can almost see through them like a ghostly image. So again, um, compositionally using odd numbers is, is sometimes the way to go. So I like this diagonal line here. Very, very nice work. The golden light is just beautiful. Um, one thing I might do down here, these are, this is a little soft. Maybe you wanna sharpen this just slightly. But you have this layer, this one, this one, this one, and you work your way up through the layers. Very, very nice. Uh, one thing I'd like you to try and see if you like it or if you don't, or maybe you tried it already, is take a look at it with these in and take a look at it with these out and see what you, what you like the best. Your shot to me is here, so I don't want anything to fight or compete with it. Um, Really, I like the idea, the the soft, as I said, kind of see-through effect. I, I like the composition using layers and this diagonal line here. That's really nice. Um, the foam poles, I'm not sure exactly what to do about those. So try both ways, see what you think. Your lighting is absolutely beautiful. It's golden and soft and dreamy, very, very nice. I've said before, these fog shots are like having a huge soft box up in the sky. It's really, really great. I like your color use. Um, I've mentioned before that brown is really nothing more than really dark orange. 
So your orange and your brown and even your yellow, it's, it's a warm palette. When you have three colors beside each other, it's called an analogous color scheme. So like on the color wheel, you have um, orange and yellow side by side, which is kind of an analogous scheme. So beautiful work there. A uh, great idea. And I don't know if you meant this or if you didn't or what, but it really has a beautiful story there about kind of, I don't know, lifting to the heavens or, or getting your troubles dropping away from your shoulders or, or something to that effect. And that's why I like the, the little see-through quality here. I, I like that. And, and here he's, he's on his way up. A suggestion I might have is the same suggestion I just gave. Drop only the top. It'll look more panoramic. Really, the interest in your shot is not here as far as I'm concerned. The interest is here. You don't need this. So drop it down maybe even to here so that it creates another layer for you, but it's not so bright and distracting because I, I said it before, I'll say it again, light things tend to advance. Not every time, but they tend to advance. So my suggestion for that is to drop the crop, drop down on top a little bit. But I love your story. And if I'm reading way too much into it, that is just fine because I love the lifting, the dropping of your troubles, the lifting toward the heavens, that's, that's nice. Who did this one? Hi, Mike. It's Patty Volpe. Um, actually, I did layer those birds into this particular shot. However, right. however, they did come up out of that field. <laughs> <laughs> Not in this shot, though. I but they did. They flushed up out of that field as I was shooting. And it was, you know, just as the sun was about to break through a heavy, heavy fog. And it was just golden. The light was beautiful. So I did move the birds and put them into this one. <laughs> I understand. But, um, yeah, they, they needed to be there because they really, they really were coming up out of that field. It was um, three, three crows that flushed out as I was oh shooting. Gosh. Yeah, yeah, it, as luck would have it. Um, I, you know what, I will try those poles out and I will try dropping that top down a little bit. Um, and thanks so much for your comments. Uh, you're welcome. A cold Minnesota morning swim. Oop, let me turn my page here. Uh, really excellent composition here. The placement of the swans gives them room to move. The fact that they're sharp creates depth. I know some people might say, well, there's a merge there. Well, I don't care because in this case that creates depth and plus you can't tell them where to swim. They go wherever they want. So uh, really, really nice. And the repetition of the curves in their necks is beautiful. The pointing of their bills toward where they're going is beautiful. So your composition really is, is quite good. Um, one thing that I might suggest, and I'll, I'll suggest it again, if you remember when we talked about color, how red is such a strong color, a powerful color, and a little bit of red really does pop. So I would do something here, tone it down, darken it, uh, whatever whatever you choose to do, because it's a bit of a distraction and and really, it's it's beautiful as is without a distraction. So I would do something with that. Uh, as I said, the swans are sharp. You have a really good detail on their feathers. Nothing's blown out. Um, your composition is great. Let's see. I I did suggest maybe. Um, I don't. I debated on this on your horizon line. I know it's not. I mean, not whether it's straight or not but whether these have two equal of value. And I still haven't decided on what to do because you can't crop off the bottom. If you crop off the top, you're gonna to lose some of the color and the softness and the beauty. So I'm gonna just leave it as is. 
because it looks it looks good. Uh, let's see. Very, very creative as far as not doing a close up of the birds, showing them in their natural environment. The tendency is to want to show them all close up. So you did really well here. Um, maybe drop the crop on top just a little bit to see what you think. And if you want to leave it as is, um, I'd get rid of this because this is almost the same value as these swans and do something with that. Otherwise, it's absolutely positively beautiful. Okay, who did this one? Oh, uh, Mike, yeah, it's me, uh, Dan Olson. Um, yeah, thanks for the comments. Um, and uh, I didn't get any closer up, not because that would have been my creative uh, niche. It's just that uh, my lens <laughs> wouldn't allow me to do so. So it is what it is. And I didn't have a lot of fog things in the repertoire, but yeah, this was uh, a lake uh, that we uh, had a cabin on for 20 years growing up. So kind of like Dave's story there. Um, but, uh, yeah, the only thing I, I did three things in post, I, I, uh, I did subject select and then, uh, took the birds and dehaze just the birds. So to kind of okay. bring them back through, Good. um, and then I, and then I think I, um, I think I brought back some of the detail as well. Um, and then, uh, and then I took the, the trees and brought a little color back and then brought some blue into the water because, uh, they were, they were grayer than even what it seemed like when I took the picture. So that was, that was about it. Just a little bit of playing uh, this last week on this photo that I took a year and a half ago. So I appreciate the comments. Thank you. Well, look at the difference as far as depth goes by having the detail on the swans. Oh, yeah. I mean, they advance toward us and the rest recedes away from us. So that was a great choice. Thanks. Appreciate that. Sure. Foggy lines. Um, this is the absolute example of atmospheric perspective. Sharp in the front haze in the back and that adds so much depth not to mention the layers that we're using here and the repeated shapes the leading lines compositionally you've got it all going it seems to me just slightly tilted to the right and i don't know if i'm imagining that or not it seems like these tilt slightly downhill. So try, try to lift them if you can and see what you think if I'm seeing things or if it's really true. So try to straighten those. Um, your exposure is good. Your foreground is sharp and it fades into the background, which is nice. Your composition, as, as I said, leading lines, perspective, the whole works. As far as distractions go, I know these really were here but they, they don't really serve a purpose. So I would remove those because they are the same value as this, which makes them pop out just like this. So I would, uh, I would get rid of those. As far as lighting goes, it's soft and it's beautiful and it's calm. And the green helps to promote that calmness because green is a calm color. And this bluish back here, the cool colors are definitely calmer colors. So. Um, good work there. Now, this is going to sound bizarre, but I think you actually have two photographs here. And I want you to try something. I want you to try a crop right down the center. And then you'll have to do some cloning over here and see what you think about a horizontal shot of this and a horizontal shot of this because they they look beautiful together but i'd like to see them separated too because there's a heck of a lot going on here i want to travel back here but then i miss this and if i follow all these back here then i've got to sort of wheel around and come back this way so if you would Try a crop right down the middle and see if you have two photographs. You might have to clone these out and that kind of thing, but give it a shot. See what you think of that idea anyway. But your, your use of the composition tools is fabulous. Your color use is good. See if it gets better with two pictures. Who did this? Um, that's my shot, Peggy Long. Um, Peggy, do you I didn't... think I'm crazy? <laughs> um, no, I like the idea of propping it down the middle and seeing about getting the two pictures. I didn't, 
I didn't see that before. Um, this is a scene that I passed this while well, this power line every morning on my way to work. Oh, wow. And, and, and I would watch, I watch for this scene every year with the fog leering down in, in the, in the valley. Um, that's out over the Cumberland Valley right here in central PA. So, um, I, I, I missed the spots in the back, which are the lights. And I'm not sure if they're from the trucking companies down along 11 or if that's the school. Right. Um, but yeah, I missed those. I should have, they should be, you're right. I'll uh, take those out. Problem. Just loop them out and you're good to go. Yeah. And I will, I will crop it down the middle and see about the two pictures too. Give it a try and, and see how it works out. Yeah. Thank you for your comments. I, I appreciate them. You're very welcome. Spring snow, resized copy. I think it's just supposed to be spring snow, actually. The, um, the light in this shot is beautiful. It's warm. It has a, a brownish warm feel to it. The image is really sharp. The background is nice and soft. So you can see here that details tend to move forward and the atmospheric soft things tend to move back. And that's another atmospheric perspective is a good way to create depth. Um, one thing I might suggest, and the rabbit is, is awesome there. I'm, I want you to do a little bit of work with the front paws so they don't look quite as much like they're floating. I don't know if you can crop like a little weed here and put it over or exactly what. But other than that, the, the light on the rabbit matches the light in the in the scene very very well very very well um the exposure is great the details good your composition is good i like the placement of the rabbit actually even though it's not on like one of the law of thirds powerpoints i like that it balances the two vertical trees i like that uh let's see the background is is you have like one third here and two thirds here. And that does work. I know a lot of people say, oh, that law of thirds thing is baloney. Well, it doesn't work always, but many times it does. And it makes things, makes you decide, oh, this is a picture of the forest. And here's something in the forest. So it, it, it does have its place for sure. Uh, the lighting, as I said, is perfect. It looks like a diorama. The lighting is just absolutely perfect. A little brown tinge. Very, very nice. Very creative. Um, again, the only thing I might mention, and I, I see there's a shadow even underneath, but I'm not sure what to do about this. Everything else looks absolutely beautiful. The background's great. The detail's good. Who did this shot? That's mine, Sherry. I knew it. <laughs> <laughs> and I wasn't happy with the, the rabbit. Um, it was a last minute thing because when I when I did the picture, it just looked like it needed something. Yeah. So I, I had a rabbit and I thought, oh, I'll throw that in there. But the, the only thing is the rabbit was sitting on grass. Right. And so it was hard to convert it into the snow. And I knew I didn't. I didn't quite like the way it was fitted in there and I had to work with that, but um, so I, I know I do have to work with those poles. It didn't look right to me either. <laughs> maybe pull like Some maybe the, a, yeah. a clone from back here somewhere and put it in front. Something like give some, there's gotta be something in here that you can use. Okay. All right. And I wasn't quite sure about the size of it either. Uh, that I didn't really notice that it was too small or too big. Yeah. How, you, how did you get the light on the rabbit to be about the same tone as the rest? Or was it that way? Uh, I probably add some, I'm not, I don't remember how I did it. Um, sometimes I put like a, um, oh, what do you call it? Uh, I put a uh, layer over it and snap it to the the bottom layer. Okay. And then I can then I can add highlighting to it. Yeah, because this this shadow here has a brownish touch to it. So 
I, I also probably put it through topaz and that's probably why there's some you know once i had everything together then i probably threw that it into topaz and tried different um, okay. colors and you know things right. like that to make the to change the coloring so that's probably why the coloring is on the whole i see whole picture we'll see what you can do with those paws okay <laughs> okay <laughs> all right thank you you're thank welcome you comments Okay, grazing, um, really good detail. I know it's it's kind of harsh, bright light, but it gives a real nice orangish brown touch here. Very, very nice. Um, I like the fact that it's horizontal, which has a lot of horizontal lines in it, I guess is what I should say, which again, promotes peace and calm. Um, a couple of suggestions that I have here, and I don't know how this will work. You see that this is kind of soft. Well, if you could crop, you don't have to crop out the whole entire fence because later you can clone, get rid of the top of the fence. Crop it maybe right along here somewhere. And you can also bring down the top. So it'll be way more panoramic than what you have now. You won't have to fight this. And really the, the important part of your image is not here. So you can drop this even to there, pull this up to here. And I realize you'll have a panorama. It'll be like a whole new image. And maybe you'll even wanna come in here a little bit. So as far as, as what to do there, cropping is, is really the main suggestions that I have because that front part of the fence again is soft. So we wanna get rid of that, or at least that's my suggestion anyhow. I like the horizontal peaceful feel to it. Uh, the weight of the image is skewed left a little bit. So this really isn't necessary. You can, you can crop there too. Um, distractions I talked about, the fence, uh, the lighting I talked about, the color, the, the blue looks good with the orange. Again, brown is a, is a member of the orange family. So they look really good together, really good. So good work there. Uh, let's see, post-processing I mentioned, cropping out the fence and some of the sky and a little bit on the right and see what you come up with. Your exposure is great. It's a sharp image and you got some things to work with there. It really will look good. Who did it? That's uh, me, Judy Kime. I was, I was driving and actually this was pretty early in the morning. It was like eight o'clock in the morning. Wow. And it was the end of October and it was a pretty frosty morning. I don't remember the temperature. <laughs> but I'm sure it was chilly. Um, yeah, I sort of wondered what to do with that fence in the, in the front there because um, I, cloning it out would have been just horrendous. So, so, <laughs> yes. so th yeah, that's, so that's a great idea. I will definitely try the cropping. So um, if, if you crop and you still have some left, yeah. that'll be much less horrendous than right. trying to take it all out. Right, exactly. Yeah, so, so yeah, so I, I will definitely try that. I appreciate your comments. Okay, certainly. And last but certainly not least, City Island Fog. Uh, the thing that struck me here, one of them was the reflections. I really like that. Um, your composition is good. This adds just a nice little pop so that it's not totally monochromatic. Um, as I said, your exposure is good. I'm not sure, again, I've mentioned this a couple of times because of the fog, you can afford to lose some of this because it's not adding really any interest to your image. The interest to me is down here in the reflections and this fog band and these buildings. So you can take an inch or two off of the top and see what you think anyway, give it a try. I like how the trees here balance the stadium here so it's a balanced composition as far as distractions go again um 
the distractions should have to do some of them with the values. This, these are these two things are a brighter value and they pick up and compete a little bit with this. I can see there's other ones back there, but they're blocked out enough. So we'll take these two out. We'll take these two out. And I'd also remove this. You can do it by a crop if you want, or you can do it by a, um, a clone, whatever, whatever you're most comfortable with. But I don't really want this to compete with this because this really gives you a nice pop right in your composition. Um, lighting, it's gray and it's gloomy, which is just right for what you're doing here. Uh, the red and blue sign gives you an anchor to catch your eye on. I like the uh, comp the um, reflections. You did good with that. So as far as suggestions, I already mentioned the dots and the sign on the left and drop the top crop a little bit. See what you think of there. Okay, who did this one? Hmm. Everybody's been here so far. Uh, Rick, can you tell us who the photographer was? I'm sorry, I forgot to mute. Oh, oh, no. <laughs> sorry, go ahead. <laughs> I forgot to unmute. I'm bad. Well, now you have to do your whole speech over again. Oh, no. <laughs> pressure. Um, yeah, thanks, Mary Eileen Carsons. Um, did not notice that FNB sign on the uh, left there. So, yeah. I'd like to get that out. And um, but thank you for your comments. Thank you. You're welcome. And that's it. OK, well, Mike, thank you very much. I'm always impressed with the uh, the detail of your, your scrutiny of the images. You do <laughs> do a great job with that. Uh, and uh, we really appreciate it. Anybody have any questions or comments for Mike? Thank you, Mike. Yeah, great job. You're welcome. Yes. Yeah, thank Super you. job, Mike. Thank you. Very in-depth. Great job. Thank very you, Mike. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Mike. Mike. Nice. Very welcome. Thank you. Okay, guys. Thank you. Uh, I'll put out the follow-up email tomorrow that will include the link to the reporting and a reminder about upcoming events. So thank you and good night. Good night. Thank you, everyone. Welcome, new members. Hi.